when I will pray and think. I think and pray to several subjects. Heaven hath my empty words, whilst my invention, hearing not my tongue, anchors on Isabel. Heaven in my mouth, if I did but only chew his name. And now in my heart, the strong and swelling evil of my conception. The state whereon I studied is like a good thing, being oft read, grown feared and tedious. Yea, my gravity, wherein let no man hear me. I take pride. Could I, with boot, change for an idle plume that the air doth beat with vain? O oh, place, O oh, form, how oft dost thou with thy case, thy habit, wrench off from fools and tie the wiser souls to thy false seeming? Blood, thou art blood. Let us write then, good angel, on the devil's horn. Tis not the devil's crest. How now, who's there? One Isabel, a sister, desires access to you. Teach her the way. Oh, heavens, why does my blood thus muster to my heart, making it both unable for itself and dispossessing of all my other parts of necessary fitness? So play the foolish throngs of one that swoons. Come all to help him. And so by stop the air by which he should revive. And even so the general, subject to a well-wished king, quit their own part, and with obsequious fondness crowd to his presence, where their untaught love must appear thence. How now, fair maid? I'm come to know your pleasure. That you might know it would much better please me than to demand what it is. <laughs> your brother cannot live. Even so, heaven save your honor. And yet, he may live a little while. <laughs> as long as you are I, yet he may die. Under your sentence. Yea. When, I beseech you, that in his reprieve, longer or shorter, he may be so fitted that his soul sick not. Oh, how fine these filthy vices! It were as good to pardon him that hath from nature stolen a man already made, as to remit their saucy sweetness, that to coin heaven's image in stamps that are forbid. Tis all as easy falsely to take away a life too many, as to put metal in restrained means to make a false one. Tis said down so in heaven, but not in earth. Say you so? Then I shall oppose you quickly. Which would you rather, that the most just law now took your brother's life, or to redeem him, give up thy body to such sweet uncleanness as she that he hath stayed. Sir, believe this, I had rather give my body than my soul. I talk not of your soul. <laughs> Our compelled sins stand more for number than for a cot. How say you? Oh, nay, I'll not warrant that, for I can speak against the thing I say. Answer to this, I, now, the voice of the recorded law. Do pronounce a sentence on your brother's life. Might there not be a charity in sin to save this brother's life? Please you to do it. I'll take it as a peril to my soul. It is no sin at all, but charity. Please you to do it at peril of your soul. We're equal boys of sin and charity. Then I do beg his life if it be sin. Heaven let me bear it. You granting of my suit, if that be sin, I'll make it my mourn prayer to have it added to the faults of mine, and nothing of your answer. Oh, nay, but hear me. Your sense pursues, not mine. Either you are ignorant, or seem so craftily, and that's not good. Let me be ignorant, and do nothing good, but graciously to know I am no better. Thus, wisdom wishes to appear most bright when it doth cast itself as black masks proclaiming sheer beauty ten times louder than beauty could display it. But mark me, to be received plain, I'll speak more gross. Your brother is to die. So? And his offense is so as it appears. I count it to the law upon that pain. True. Admit no other way to save his life. 
as I subscribe, not that, nor that any other, but in the loss of question, that you, his sister, finding yourself desired of such a person whose credit with the judge or whose own great place could fetch your brother from the manacles of the all-building law and that there were no earthly means to save him, but either you lay down the treasures of your body to this supposed or else to let him suffer. What would you do? As much for my poor brother as myself. That is, for I am in the terms of law, the oppression of key whips I bear his rubies, and strip myself to death, as to a bed that long you have been sick for, ere I build my body up to shame. Then your brother must die. And to a cheek away. Better were a brother died at once than a sister by the demon who should die forever. Were you then not as cruel as the sentence you have slandered so? <sighs> Pardon me, my lord, it all falls out. Have we speak not really me. I have something to excuse the thing I hate for his advantage that I dearly love. We are all frail. Let my brother die. If not a feudary, but only he owe and succeed thy weakness. Nay, women are frail too. Aye, as the glasses where they view themselves, which are as easy broken as they make forms. Women, help heaven, mend their creation more in property by them. Nay, call us ten times frail. We are soft as our complexions are incredulous. False prince. I think it well. And from this testimony of your own sex, since I suppose we are made to be no stronger than the faults that may shake our frames, let me be bold. I do arrest your words. Being that you are, that is, a woman. If you be more, you're none. If you be one, as you are well expressed, by all external warrants, show it now by putting on a distinct livery. I have no tongue but one, gentle my lord. Let me entreat you speak the former language. Plainly conceive, I love you. My brother did love Juliet, and you tell me he shall die for it. He shall not die, Isabel, if you give me love. I know your virtue hath a license in it, which seems a little fouler than it is to pluck on others. Believe me, upon mine honor, my words express my purposes. Ha! Little honor to be much believed in most pernicious purpose. Seeing, seeing, I will proclaim thee, Angela, look for it. Sign me a present pardon for my brother, or with an outstretched throat I'll tell the world aloud what man thou art. Who would believe me, Isabel? My unsoiled name, the austerness of my life, my vouch against you, my place in the state will so your accusation overweigh that you shall stifle in your own report and smell of calumny. I have begun, and now I give my sensual race the rein. Fit thy consent to my sharp appetite. Lay by all nicety and prolixious blushes that banish what they sue for. Redeem thy brother by giving up thy body to my will, or else he must not only die the death, but by thy unkindness shall draw his death to lingering sufferance. Answer me tomorrow, or by the affection that guides me most, I'll prove a tyrant to him. And as for you, say what you can. My thoughts always your truth. 